Hey, it's my pleasure to introduce to you Jim and Matt Schiefelbein. They own Hardcore Waterfall Company. But what a lot of people don't know is that you're hardcore anglers also. We've got kind of a special show for you here. We're out on the Western Reservoirs, right? Yeah. Gigantic pieces of water. Yes, in the fall. Yeah, in the fall. And what we're going to do is show you a one, two, three punch. Show you three different types of presentations to do at the same time, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to be able to find these fish, use three presentations at the same time, and man, are we going to catch some big fish? I sure hope I so. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> we're looking forward to Yeah, I, I think we're going to get a bunch of big ones. So come join us. Come join the next bike crew with these fish wolves. Lake Sakakawea, the largest man-made lake located entirely within North Dakota. There's currently an incredible amount of smelt in the system, providing plenty of food for many different species of fish. I don't have a chub out and cast. I think that's what we'll all do. Okay. Those will run three chubs. One guy can Johnny dart or vertical. Being such a large body of water, it can be difficult to know where to start fishing, but you can narrow the vast amount of water down to key areas based on time of year. In fall in Sakakawea and the other western reservoirs, we like to target the points of steep break lines and also where the channel goes into shore and causes more steep break lines because the wind will drive the bait fish up against there and it's a very good spot for big fish to easily find food. Another thing we like to look at is sunken islands around the tips of the sunken islands and on top. The wind will drive the bait up there and it's another great spot for big fish to find food. So if you're out here in the fall, be sure to look for steep brake lines and pods of smell. You should be able to find some fish. I'm just going to set the hook. He's on there. Go ahead and net him, Matty. Matt, can you grab the net? Oh, yeah. It's a heavy fish. Looks like a good one. Yeah. Ooh, big northern, huh? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Nice job. <laughs> That's a great one. And they're such nice pike. Okay. All right. Looks like he got that one pretty good. Can you grab me the pliers, buddy? Yeah, no problem. Okay. All right. This is a pretty good example. Of what we've been catching for a couple days now. There's a lot of great pike. Uh, catching them on chubs in this fall pattern in September, and there's a lot of nice pike. These are great fighting fish. A lot you of can fun to catch. See, they're fat, yeah. but great fish. A lot of fun to catch on a chub. You know, there's not many places in the states where you can catch pike like this. Look no. at the belly on that thing. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, they're just, all of them are healthy fish. Yep. It's uh, it's kind of cool to be able to come to a place and get oh, them yeah, on this size. Is. Get this guy back in the water and try to catch another one. Yeah. The next bite is brought to you by Mercury Marine. Go boldly. Tracker boats. Fish the finest. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Berkeley. Catch more fish. And Power Pole Total Boat Control. Closed captioning for the next bite is provided by Precision Trolling Data, the authority for crankbait diving depth information. 
There are tons of sharp breaks and sunken islands on Lake Sakakawea. So many that your electronics become extremely important. The way you set up your electronics is not the standard setup, simply because you're trying to cover as much water as possible, as well as trying to cover the steepest breaks. When you do find the fish in September, oftentimes it's not just walleyes feeding on the smell. I'd like to take a moment while I'm looking for fish here to tell you a little bit about how to set up your graph to make yourself more efficient. Uh, you can see that I'll go from shallow and then I'll go down the brake line to deep as, as you can see here I'm searching. Now this is interesting because right here is a fish and then these are smelt. You can see as we go deeper the smelt are deeper right on that brake was a fish. Now how do I see that while the boat's moving? What I'll do is two things. I'll go to a two time zoom on the graph itself. That actually blows the picture up slightly and I can really look at the detail on 2D. The other thing that I'll do is I'll go into the menu and then I'll hit advanced and you can see there's a section called scroll speed. I increase that to two. Scroll speed means that the, that's how fast the picture is moving across the screen. It allows me to see a clear picture while I'm moving pretty quickly with the boat. And it'll zoom the whole area in. Between those two functions, I can see some really cool things. Is you can miss one, and a lot of times they'll come back and drill it. There's not a lot of baits that, that do that. I said, that's why I love shivers, is because if you miss one, a lot of times they come back. You see that on Green Bay all the time. You guys, like nice you guys thought that I was kidding when I went, oh, oh and I missed them, didn't, weren't you? <laughs> well, you've done that about a half dozen times today. Yeah, but they just didn't come back to you. <laughs> See, now you can't tell if I'm lying or not, can you? He's almost under the boat. Yeah, yeah he's almost swimming ahead of us. But... Oh, now he changed his mind. That's got to be a big fish. Huh? That's a big fish. Yeah. Could be a cat. I suppose could could heck could be a big walleye. Yeah, could, I would prefer you think optimistically. Walleye. Oh, walleye. look how big he is. Oh, it's yeah. a cat. No, it's cat. cat. <laughs> <laughs> I got excited. <laughs> but I'll tell you, that's one of the cool things about all this stuff out here, Oops. is you don't know know what you're gonna get. No. There we got him. <laughs> you know, people think that cats are bottom feeders and you got to use stink bait for them and all that kind of stuff. We catch so many cats fishing for walleyes. Jimmy, you want to hand the pliers here? Sure. He's going to, he really crushed this thing. Yeah, he did. He's got it in there. Yep. Yeah. They are predators and they come after all kinds of stuff. We catch them all the time on crankbaits. One of the most aggressive baits there is is a shiver minnow. And he bit it Just and missed it. it and then came back and really whaled it. That's these are pretty cool fish. Yeah, right? they are. Gary, really I don't are. even think he was on our card for, for target species today, so no. we got a bonus. No, this punch. is a bonus. bonus, yeah. bonus punch I don't know on if you call it frosting on the cake. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, we're gonna let this guy go. All right, buddy. Boosh. And away he goes. <laughs> <laughs> Total Control, presented by PowerPole. 20 years of trust evolved from Total Boat Control. Trolling for walleyes is one of the most popular techniques all over the country to put a lot of them in the boat. And when it comes to rods, this is a situation where I'm gonna make sure that I have the right length rods, durable rods, and for many, many years, the Bass Pro Shops Walleye Angler Signature Series rod was one of the most popular amongst many people in the Midwest. It had the right action. It was strong. It did the job, whether you were pulling planer boards or flatline trolling. 
And when we look at the new model here that Bass Pro's come out with, it's called the Prodigy Walleye Series. You're gonna see the same actions within these rods as what those walleye angler rods were. There's a couple changes we've made to them. Obviously the, the, the setup is actually a little bit lighter, the rods are lighter, the graphite's a, a higher quality, but you'll see the end of all of the trolling rods, we've made kind of an activator tip, a, a light colored uh, neon green tip. Uh, at the end of all of the trolling rods. And what that does for you is if you're flatline trolling, you're able to read small crankbaits working very, very well. If they pick up a weed, you can see it in a heartbeat. So something that's added that's really, really nice. This is the eight, fo eight and a half foot telescopic uh, rod that I'll use for planer boards, for flatline trolling, bigger crankbaits. But the rod right here, that we made sure definitely stayed in the line is the nine and a half foot telescopic rods. So you can imagine the type of uh, spread that you can get if you have a nine and a half foot rod out each side. And I use that for lead core all the time. You can have a great spread. So definitely check out this series. For the price, they're extremely strong. They'll get the job done when it comes to trolling for walleyes, no matter what body of water you want to go out and catch a bunch of them on. In North Dakota, you can use two lines per person in the boat. It's important to figure out a way to utilize all of the lines possible. Oh, yep, there's one. You got him, Matt? Pretty decent. Feels like a pretty nice one so far. <laughs> Need the net? Oh, yeah, he's, he looks like a decent yeah, that one. That rod doubles over really good. Feels like a pretty nice fish. Yeah, I turned around and looked, and there he was. Oh, a nice northern. Ooh. <laughs> nice. Oh, nice. Oh, he just popped oh, off popped in the net. Right <laughs> <in> that. <laughs> that fish is a natural born movie star. That's, That's the way perfect. I like to release it. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's otherwise, a good they, one. otherwise, they'll battle you right to the floor. Yep. <laughs> Has he got one eye? It's just he's blind in the one. Yeah, he's got one eye. Matt. Do you always go after a one-eyed fish? <laughs> I try to, they're easier you to sneak catch. up on them. Yeah. <laughs> Although there are many different lure choices, the deep water narrows things down to mostly heavy presentations, making glide baits a perfect option. We're utilizing a one, two, three punch while we're fishing today. The first punch is the big chubs. Uh, you know, you, you use those types of baits on a fall bite like this because you can get a big fish. You can get big northern, you can get big walleyes. Uh, you never know what those chubs are going to attract. And then we've got more action style baits that we're using. The first one here is called the Johnny Darter. Uh, we're using that to snap vertically. It's a great vertical jigging bait. And then I've got a shiver minnow on this rod. I actually cast with this bait. Uh, sometimes if I we're working, say, 30 feet, I might want to take some casts up into 25 or into 20 feet just to see if there's fish up there. So between the three different techniques, the big fish, big chub type technique, the vertical jigging technique, and then the casting with the shiver minnow, we've got a great lineup of presentations to catch a lot of fish in a late fall bite. Oh, there's one, boys. You got one, Gare? Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah. We'll need the net for this one. Yeah, it's not too bad a one. Did you see him yet? No. No, I didn't. Ooh. He's cruising a little bit like a big northern, but... Seems like a big walleye. Oh, that's a big walleye. Okay, here he comes, nice Jim. Fish. Nice comes fish. Jim. Oh, he just got yeah. nice. Oh, oh he's got it down he there. He inhaled that. <laughs> Man, look at he almost swallowed the thing. <laughs> yeah, that one's going to hurt coming out. You know a good dentist? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, I do know a good dentist. <laughs> yeah, except for I use three quarter inch drills now. <laughs> wow. Nice fish. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. These fish are so healthy looking. Yeah. They've been so fun catching them. Yeah, they have been a blast. Strong too, aren't they? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He felt like he was going to be quite a bit bigger than that. Part of it is when they T-bone him. Yeah, that yeah, bait sideways yeah, in his mouth. Yeah, right. Got him good. Nice job. Yeah. Way to go. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I'm going to need pliers nice. for this one. Gary, I think we should let the young guy take the fish off. <laughs> yeah, instead of the blind guy <laughs> yeah, right yeah. doing it. <laughs> See, I didn't go to dental school. Hey, you did a pretty good job, though. Yeah. Clear. Thank you, Matthew. The assist. Good deal. Nice fish. 
Well, maybe they're up a little shallower than what we thought, huh? That was like your first cast, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, go get your grandpa. There he goes. Like a movie star. <laughs> Topics, leading information and tackling techniques to make you a better angler. Presented by Mercury. When it comes to rods, everyone has their favorite rod. And to me, it's really nice to know when to have your most sensitive rod in your lineup. And my favorite rod is a Fenwick World Class. When it comes to pitching jigs, to me, you want to have the best rod you have in your lineup. And to me, the World Class is that. And especially, I have a seven foot two uh, medium action is my favorite. And that seven foot two length is very important when you're pitching lightweight jigs. It helps you cast further. Um, this World Class rod has Fuji guides, which are very smooth, which is also very important when you're casting lightweight jigs to cast further. And lightweight is very important when it comes to sensitivity because the lighter the rod is, the more that movement of the line is going to be amplified throughout the rod. And uh, so this world class rod to me has been my favorite for over five years because because pitching jigs is one of the techniques that took me a long time to master. A lot of times you're dealing with wind and a lot of bow in your line and it can be very tough to detect when you hit bottom and obviously even bites. And so having a no stretch line and a very sensitive rod is going to put the odds in your favor a lot more. Checking multiple different species off the list is a fun, easy way to pass the time between walleye bites. It doesn't matter if they're white bass, smallmouth bass, northern pike, or even catfish. They can also give you clues as to where exactly in the water column active fish may be waiting to feed. Well, we'll check this off our size list. No more little ones. Dropping a rod with a creek chub down to the bottom can seem simple. Normally, we would say keep it simple, but to avoid tangles, small changes need to be made. We're running creek chubs today, and what we always try to do is spread the rods and the creek chubs out as far away from the boat as we can so we can all run two rods at one time. Now, up at the front of the boat, Gary's using a little bit shorter rod with a heavier weight to keep his creek chub forward, and, and Matt and I are in the back using these longer rods uh, to keep the creek chubs out away from the boat so we can use a, a Johnny Darter at the same time, and we can both use two rods. Now, these rods have uh, an extra fast tip so we can watch the tips load up when they get a strike you can see the tip will just ease back and we can we can feed the line to the fish or we can grab it out of the the rod holder if it already has it we can set the hook right away so getting the boat in a position where we can all use two rods at one time and, and spreading them apart is an effective way to run two rods at one time boy he really peeled out a lot of line but this was giant chub, and he bit it really hard. Oh, yeah, there he is. <laughs> you got a hook into him? Yeah, I do, I do. Oh, yeah, that looks like a good one. You know, he doesn't feel that big. Oh, still got a lot. Oh, wait a minute, he's getting a lot bigger. Oh, yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, this is like a big one. fish. No. I must have had a lot of slack yet in the line from what he took out. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is a good fish. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've had walleyes fight like they, they act like a pike, yeah, and then and you get them up, up and they're 29 inches. Yeah. They make those runs like that. Right. Well, we use this mambo, <laughs> you know, looking for the big fish, whatever it is. It's yeah. a, Definitely it's, a, it's a, nice a good fish. one. Yeah. Big bait, big fish. Big, big pike, big pike, big pike. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's a nice one. Yeah, it is. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's a heavy fish. Wow. Looks like he swallowed a softball. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> look at how fat he is. Holy cow. Man, that's what you come out here for. That's you don't know if you're going to get a big walleye or a pike like this. Oh, look at that. <laughs> that's a neat fish, I yeah. Gary. That's yeah. cool. You just, I mean, look at how much he's eaten. You just eat and smelt and eat and smelt. That could have been your giant chub, too. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know if the chub was quite that big. <laughs> yeah, he's got the feedback on. Yeah, I think he swallowed the hook, too, so we're going to cut it off. That's what they always recommend to do. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah, no yeah. doubt about that. Here, i got scissors here, Jim. Let's, let's go ahead and clip it right off. There we go. Right. boy. Let's get this guy back in. He's going to live. Oh, yeah. Cutting. 
the hook saved him. There it goes. Tail wag. Yeah, he's right here. That's our pet bass. He's staying in the shade of the boat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what they do. They like hide in shady spots. It started started swimming away from him too hard. He couldn't help himself. That is so awesome. <laughs> you you caught our pet bass. <laughs> he couldn't couldn't take it anymore. Yeah. Right underneath the boat. Caught our pet fish. Yeah. He couldn't take that chub swimming around in front of him any longer. He was kind of tame, but yeah. it was fun. He was fun. under the boat for probably five minutes, just following us around. It uh, when I go to two time, it increases the picture size. That's okay. I was getting a little windy anyway. The steep breaks and the big fish will target those bait bait pods. I know. I always think I always push myself right out of it. I haven't done this in a while. <laughs> so, so when. Uh, the next bite would like to thank North Shore Inn and Suites in Garrison, North Dakota, located just minutes from Lake Sakakawea. Whether you're just passing through or looking for exciting hunting and fishing opportunities, the North Shore Inn and Suites offers many amenities for your enjoyment. For more information on North Shore Inn and Suites, please visit GarrisonMotel.com or call 701-7202.